Hi, my name is Zachary Angelat, and I wanted to go over Go Cobra and Go Viper. Um, you can think of Go Viper as a way to read config files and kind of store it into memory. Go Cobra is more for command line stuff to basically create command line applications. Um, to install it, uh, they basically, if you just Google Go Cobra, it'll be the first link, and you would just run this command. You do have to make sure your go path stuff is all set up. Um, and there's a really useful thing called generate, which again, you just install it and then you run the init command and you should have it. If you have any trouble with it not recognizing your path, I use this, um, but I'll, I'll link it in the bottom of the video. But um, anyways, to kind of get going with it, you create a main.go file and then you do the packaging and then this is where you, you could do one or the other you could do the go mod file or you could do the cobra file um, but I usually do um, actually cobra init and then the package name um, if you do the package name like this and you call it the folder When you do the mod file, you have to call it the folder If you do the mod file as your github and you do this as just the folder It won't like it. It won't understand Well, the mod file won't understand kind of what's going on. So you have to do one or the other So if we do it this way with just calling it the name whatever it is It'll automatically generate all this stuff um, you know, this doesn't work because I didn't do the go mod. So if you do go mod init the same name, it's important. Otherwise, it won't. Otherwise, this won't work. It's a little detail thing for newbies that might take them a while to figure out. And then when you do go mod tidy, it pulls it all down, does everything. Uh, so what it did was generate a kind of a command folder with kind of a root thing um, and so you technically can run it from here but I want to create a command so doing that is really easy with the generate and you just do cobra add and whatever name you want it could be anything um, do fib sure and now that created a fib file and it's got the command and you just use this as part of your command to build out your application. It sounds like jumbly gook right now, but blame me. Um, so when you do go build and you got your little binary there and you do that and you do fib. So we're running the binary and we're running the command fib. Because that's what it generated. Hey, fit is called. And that's exactly what it's doing here. I mean, you can do pretty much anything right here. And that's how it'll run. And if you do go build again. Oh. Maybe I do go my tidy. Oh, I was building it as fib, I think. There you go. And so if you do tester fib, there you go. Um, yeah, it's some commands you kind of have to keep in the back of your mind, but it's not, I think, terribly complicated. Um, so, okay, what can you do with this now? Like, what, what am I going to do with this? How many more commands or whatever? So I kind of got something set up where I was generating code with it. Um, one useful thing, and I won't go over the Viper stuff right this second, but as far as um, doing the Cobra stuff, uh, if you do, well, no, that's the Viper. Here we go. So what you can do with the Cobra is basically 
ask, like you, you can set a flag, which is what this is doing. Let's say our flag is model. But one thing you do have to remember to do, if you're gonna be, you're gonna be setting flags. And what's the flag in here? Flag is just dash a letter and then it does something extra. Ooh. Um, I mean, it does a lot more that, more than that underneath, but that's, oh yeah, when you do use this, it has to be part of that command. So, kind of what's going on here is it's presuming the model flag. It's shortening it to where you could just do dash M instead of dash model. And a little message here in case you get it all wrong. And that's, or you could set an extra value if you wanted right here. I don't know. But uh, anyways, you got to do something with that variable then. So we just print it out, I don't know. So that when you do go build again, you build it out and you run the command, the, the binary and then the command, you do flag um, or model you could do. Um, whatever it is that you're putting in there. So blah, blah, blah. And it prints it out. So now you have the ability to take in a command and store it in the memory and do whatever. Okay, fine. What, you know, that's great, I guess. Well, you can do this other ways with straight go, but it turned into a big giant switch statement and it looks very messy and I like to generate so I don't have to worry about connecting files and importing them and all that stuff. It just automatically does it all for you, which is really nice. You don't have to think about it. Now, moving on to Viper, um, basically, you this has to do with config files. So why would you use a config file? Well, if you want to make, you know, another command, let's say, but you want to share some memory between these two, but you don't want the program to keep running, right? Um, this is a way to kind of update the configs and then read from them. And so it's like a persistence of data between commands without having to have the program continually running, which is nice. It doesn't have to eat up resources. It's just a command. It just reads it, just stores it, just does whatever you want, and then ends. Done. Which is nice. Um, so in order to get the ball rolling with Viper, um, so, I mean, it's a little bit obvious kind of what it does. I mean, Viper set config name. And this is sort of a way to kind of um, get the ball rolling with whatever is going on with the config file. So let's say you want to do a config, I don't know, config, sure. And you need a config file in there. Um, I don't know, config file. Let's do YAML. You can do JSON or whatever, but let's do YAML. Um, now YAML sort of has its own little structuring with the tabs or whatever. Um, let's do environment and let's do um, path, let's say. Sure. Um, sure. Um, you put whatever you want. It doesn't have to be set up like this. I mean, the, the padding the tab space does have to be, and so do these things, uh, the colons, but, and I, I, this may have to be in a string format. I'm not hundred percent, but anyways, let's say we want to, we set up our config file and we have our config values or whatever it is. Um, I'll leave a link to this under the video thing. Um, we install the Viper stuff. Actually, I may have to install and install it. Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to.
Uh, okay, do my tidy. Okay. And then we probably have to import it. Does the system may not know about it? Okay. So it all not complaining. Anyways, um, so this is basically the name of the file. If you didn't figure that one out. We called it config file um, type YAML. And then this is the folder, basically. And so we did config. And so that's sort of how you would set up it being able to have access to your config. Could you do this through just straight go with just reading the file? Yes, you can. And I sometimes do. Um, because the, the, the writing of it isn't the greatest as far as Viper. I'm not hundred percent sure why they didn't totally implement that, but this is a way because when you run the command, it loads the config each time. And the point is that when you do update it, when you run the command, it knows it's been updated. You tend to want to read things through the Viper command instead of through Go, only to have it be a part of its process with Viper um, so that you can do extra things with it. Um, but the writing part, I don't know, for whatever reason, it, it can update the values and everything, but as far as creating extra parts of the config, um, it's not the greatest experience in the world to try and get it to work. Um, so I just write it and then when you run a command it reads it all and loads it and then it doesn't matter. Alright, so let's say you want to grab the environment path and you want to grab this value because it's, I don't know, the folder structure of something, the value of something, I don't know, true, false, whatever. Um, basically you just run this, kind of like Cobra. Um, so it'll look for the environment and then it'll look for the path and then it loads into memory and then we just do path and so it should um, should do it so if we do go build and then we do the tester fib we don't have to have the model flag if we don't want um, we just run it, boom, sure. So grab the value. So all this loaded the config file, went into it, looked for the path, found that value. So why was this important? Well, this is important. So let's say you want to do a whole, like, I don't know, generate a file or something. Um, this is sort of a way to do bash. This code right here. Um, there's a, yeah, here we go. Um, so if we did this, let's say, and get rid of these guys, and we're just doing some kind of bash command. It, it doesn't have to be some kind of complicated thing. I don't know, but um, I don't know, let's say you had a folder in here named can, and you wanted to make sure it always looks for can. And so let me see if I got this right with all this stuff. Um, well, I guess we'll see. Uh, Ooh, oh yeah, utility. So I do have a command here to get that bash command working in my utility folder. Uh, shell out, it's called. I, I just looked this up. Let's say you just wanted this bad boy as the actual command. And we get rid of that ut stuff. Now it should run the bash command. 
And let's say you wanted, we don't have to do something this complicated, but um, Why would I be missing a comma? It doesn't. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but whatever. Um, let's say it does your path, and yeah, so we have that. Let's see if it'll work. I don't know if it will. Um, well, let's do touch, just in case it doesn't work. We'll create a file named can. I don't know. And it should print out if there's any errors. So we do go build. And then we look for the command again. We run it. Can. Did it create can though? That I don't know. I might have to, oh, because I didn't put some kind of, uh, just the can, like, okay, All right. see now, because I had to have some kind of extension on the file, when you go to make it, but yeah, you, you start to kind of see things can get really creative, really neat with tooling, and, uh, you could do a whole lot of stuff with this, and I, I did. Um, I got a lot of commands in here of all sorts of stuff I did with it, just because it was so neat, and you could build a really crazy utility thing. I was generating actual Go programs, and then installing their dependencies and then running them and stuff. Really, it's a problem only for single developers, not really something other groups of developers can utilize as far as this is specifically concerned, but you can create tools for them. Um, yeah, you have control of all bash, you have control of a config files, you have control of creating commands on, on a whim. You know, I mean, come on, what else do you need, sorta. Um, but yeah, and um, I'll probably show more of this stuff later, I don't know. Um, kind of explain it and everything, but yeah, if you uh, need anything or if you have any questions or anything, please let me know, and uh, thank you for watching.